So welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. We're here on this wonderful evening to celebrate Bev's career and her time at Proactum VNA. So those of you who don't know me, my name's Bob Ford. I'm the incoming president of Brockton VNA. I'll be following in the footsteps. You'll notice I did not say I'll be filling the shoes because <laughs> those are some awful big shoes to fill. She's, Beverly has had such an impact on the organization, the Brockton area, and the home health industry in Massachusetts that if I just can fill maybe a quarter of those shoes, that would be a very successful career. So there are, we did ask a number of people to have a few um, words to say about Beverly tonight. I won't uh, delay that from going on. So I'd like to ask Dennis Carmen. He's the president and CEO of the United Way of the Greater Plymouth County. He's got a, I would say, um, musical reflection for us this evening. Dennis? I would like to uh, first and foremost really lower the expectations. <laughs> you have actually real musicians from Berkeley. It was, wasn't it wonderful to listen to that music? Yeah, th yeah, give it up, that's right. Um, I had this revelation at 3.30 this morning. Um, some of you may recognize uh, how many of you grew up in the 70s? So if I said to you, do you know, you know who Ricky Nelson is? That's even earlier than the 70s. Ricky Nelson, come on, raise your hands, don't be shy. All right, good, all right. So you might know the story behind the song that in 1972, he was asked to do one of those nostalgia tours at Madison Square Garden, right? So he shows up with his band at the time, and now he's got long hair. He doesn't look like little Ricky Nelson from the you know, Ozzy and Harriet show, right, who sang all those great songs, and they kind of gave him a hard time. I don't know that they actually booed him, but he wrote a song about it. You might remember the song Garden Party. Do you remember that? Yeah. Went to, okay, good. Oh, at least some people. This, is, this you know, I was really worried that it's like, oh my gosh, no one's gonna even know what I'm talking about. Well, this has very little to do with anything. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to see how far you'd listen to me. No. Um, no, I, I thought to myself, what a great little song to do a little, like, parody of, right? So this is called Retirement Party. <laughs> yeah, well, don't clap yet, because I'm going to lean these things. I'm going to try to see what I'm doing, because I have to tell you, I came up with this idea at 3.30 this morning. You know, this hasn't exactly been a long, thought-out process here, so lowering the expectations, please. <laughs> I have to tell you before I start this how much I love Beverly Pavaceris. Absolutely love Beverly Pavaceris. Yeah, right? I mean, it's, it's not that she's just good at what she does. She just makes you feel good whenever you're in her presence. She really is good at taking care of people and I feel very well cared for in the number of years. I started uh, at the United Way about the same time I think Bev took on the, the CEO's role, but I, I'm blessed for that. So anyway, let, before we go any further, we, we need to get finished because there are other people up here who need to go here. And I, I apologize for this. This is going to be a little rough, guys. Okay. Bev went to a retirement party to reminisce with her old friends, a chance to share old memories. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And just remember when, <laughs> when she got to the retirement party, everyone knew her name. We're all going to be lost without her. It'll never be the same, but it's all right now. I learned, we've learned Bev's lessons well. If you can't please everyone, you can tell them to go to. <laughs> ha, we said hello to Mary Lou. She, she taught Bev the ropes. Now, you know the history, right? You know which Mary Lou, where are you, Mary Lou? Okay, good. You recognize you in the song, right? Okay, because 
Hello, Mary Lou, goodbye, heart. Yeah. Look, it was 3.30 in the morning. I couldn't do two songs. <laughs> All right, well, so <clears throat> we said hello to Mary Lou. She taught Bev the ropes. Then Bev just climbed every mountain. Now she's headed for the slopes. <laughs> but, <laughs> and over. <clears throat> okay, and just you should all be afraid now. I might use you as an illustration of the song. And because I only took a day writing it, I can write you in. So be nice to me right now, right? Over in the corner, much to his chagrin, sat Mr. Ford, crying, oh dear Lord, where do I begin? <laughs> but it's all right now. He's learned Bev's lesson well. He can't. You can't please every, everyone. Tell them to go to <clears throat> la -da -da -da. <laughs> la -da -da -da. I gotta go to the second page. Hang on a second. Visually challenged people need teleprompters, don't they? You know? Okay. Here you go, and, and this is important, and Bev would, would not be happy with me if I didn't include this, okay? Got the best nurses on the planet at the Brockton VNA, <laughs> helping all who need help and supporting our united way. I, I, I had to get a plug in somewhere, right? Right? <laughs> okay, now, I, I'm going to warn you, I'm almost done. There are multiple endings to this song, okay? You're going to have to bear with me. <clears throat> if you got to go to a retirement party, I wish you a lot of luck. But if memories were all we have, okay. Now, if it was Don Rickles, he'd end it this way. I'd be a hockey puck. Or here's the other not for preschools ending, okay? <laughs> yeah, be very careful. If you gotta go to a retirement party, then I wish you a lot of luck. If memories are all we have, it starts with F and ends with UCK. <laughs> now get your mind out of the gutter. I was talking about a fire truck. What's wrong with you people? Gosh, <laughs> well, it's all, hey, sing along with me, all right? It's all right now, we've learned our lesson well. If you can't please everyone, well, you can all go to hello, Mary Lou, goodbye, heart. No, I, I thank, you guys are really kind for this. Um, thank you, Beverly Pavaceras, for the wonderful gifts that you've continued to give us over the years, making the Brockton Visiting Nurses Association one of the most professional, one of the most caring organizations on the planet. And well, we'll miss you, but your legacy lives on in those people whose hands reach out to heal people in our community. And we thank you, thank you, thank you very much for that. Thank you very much, Dennis. All I can say is it was a good thing you singing and not me. These people would have ran out of here screaming. <laughs> All right, next up, we are in the presence of greatness. We have not one, not two, but three presidents of the Brockton VNA. Uh, we have Bev's predecessor, Mary Lou McNiff. I want an encore, Dennis. You gotta sing Hello, Mary Lou, the, the, the very special Ricky Nelson version. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here to uh, say farewell to, to Beverly uh, and to meet all the, uh, the people that I've known through the years in Brockton. It was 31 years ago that I came to Brockton, 1986, and was the director for almost 20 years, and I've been gone 12 years and I am enjoying retirement, and Beverly, you deserve it. I always tell the story about when Beverly and I have lunch up the street at Bertucci's, 
and it's usually a Friday, and they say, oh, Beverly, you going home? It's 3 o'clock. She says, oh, no, I have stuff to do. I'm so busy, I have to go back. And so maybe when we have lunch again in your leisure days ahead, we can, you can go home rather than, no, I have to do something, I have to. But um, Beverly is probably one of the most uh, hardworking uh, persons I've ever met in my career. She never said, no, I can do it. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it, just say it. And it was a pleasure to work with her and to be able to um, anoint her uh, 12 years ago and say that she would be an ideal uh, successor to the VNA. And one of the other things I think that is, shouldn't be lost in this crazy world of healthcare and reimbursement and competition and amalgamation and uh, merges, acquisitions, dissolution, is that the VNA, Brockton VNA, remains steadfast, independent, voluntary organization, carrying on the legacy of our Brockton heritage. Uh, it was founded in 1904, and it was the wives and daughters and sisters of the shoemakers, and they contributed to uh, the VNA. And much of the legacy we have financially is shoe money, right, Priscilla? Priscilla remembers that stuff. So I think it's a tribute to uh, Beverly's uh, ingenuity and her integrity and her hardworking ethic that we remain uh, freestanding alone and going to flourish for the next hundred years. And I wish Beverly every success. I know she's going to enjoy her family, her grandson, Clark. And uh, we'll see you for lunch real soon, Beverly. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Mary Lou. As I said in my opening remarks, Beverly didn't just have an impact on Brockton VNA and Brockton Hospital, or sorry, Brockton area. She had an impact on the home health industry of Massachusetts, and she was a force and to, to help tell us a little bit about Beverly and how she impacted home health in Massachusetts. I'm going to ask Meg Doherty. She's the former president of the Norwell VNA. Beverly, first of all, my great congratulations to you. You've been a real success story. You had a great predecessor who I also shared those years with on the South Shore in Norwell, but you were the best in terms of working together, being able to plan and so forth. My history with Beverly goes back on the day she took over the Brockton VNA uh, from Mary Lou McNiff, who was just unbelievable giver for home health in Massachusetts, both with Vanani and with um, Home Care Alliance of Mass. Bev stepped right into those shoes the minute Mary Lou left. We also worked on the consortium together. We've been everywhere. We've been to DC several, several times. And it was Bev who actually clued me in when my son was graduating from college and going to the Hill to work, as Bev's son did, that I was going to probably have to pay his rent. And you were right, but you at least prepared me. Let me just tell you what it's like to work with Beverly as a colleague. Any problem that needed to be solved, whether it was policy, whether it was planning, whether it was sharing resources, or whether or not it was just a gentleman's agreement on contiguous areas, and um, I, I'd like to also speak on behalf of Jane Stankiewicz, who had contiguous areas to Bev, and how could we really cover these areas appropriately and, and not be competitive? Even though our territories all overlapped, we were able to very graciously and generously help each other do just that. Um, we shared our ideas. We uh, actually were true colleagues and not competitors. So I'd like to thank you for that, Bev. Bev was a gracious, gracious host of the uh, various groups we all belong to. 
um, at the Brockton V&A, those lunches were great. I really missed them. I thought about coming over and having one just to show up. But in any event, Bev, my best, best wishes to you. Um, I hope you have as fun a year as I've just enjoyed. Thank you for your collegiality and your just genuine, wonderful self. Thanks. Thank you, Meg. Not only was Beverly a force outside, as Meg just alluded to, outside of our organization, she was a great leader inside our organization. And I'd like to ask Larry Baker to come up and represent the senior team to say a few words about Beverly. Thank you, Bob. I, I think I got elected the day I didn't show up for the last senior management meeting, wasn't it? <laughs> Well, it, it really uh, is an honor uh, for me to say a few words about Beverly uh, and part of the team. Um, I thought it would be, de be easy being the finance guy because I figured, well, what I could do is I could just ask the rest of the team to give me two things that they think about Beverly. Now I know one of the reasons she retired. So there were seven people. I asked for two things and I got 19. So I'm just gonna give you the list. Classy and committed, dedication to mission, professionalism and kindness, journey from RN to CEO, turquoise, <laughs> passion and dedication, coffee, triple aim, being superior, passionate about home care, dedicated to BVNA, great person, passionate, dedicated, leader, turquoise, <laughs> coffee, dedication, grace, pilot. Now that one I may have to explain. I I'm surprised Bev doesn't have her aviator license now because any time we were gonna try something new, Bev would say, let's try a pilot on that one. <laughs> and above all else, determination. So th those were the things that your, your team thought about you and uh, well-deserved every one of them. But the more I thought, uh, the more I realized Bev's a lot more than that. She loved technology, except when it didn't work. <laughs> she never understood how all of those meetings showed up on her calendar, but Amy, book a meeting, <laughs> I mean, for those of you who are old enough, she, she was BVNA's Steve McGarrett, because uh, it was just book them. Um, one word uh, not up there is controlling. Um, I, I've, been, I've worked with Bev for seven years, and we've gone to a number of off-site meetings. Not once has she let me drive. <laughs> Wouldn't let me do it. And she didn't warn me that she sets the, the clock in her car 20 minutes ahead. So I jumped in the car and said, how are we gonna get there? She said, don't worry, we're all good. <laughs> and then there are the bevisms. We need to either get a money tree, she would say, or rob a bank. <laughs> and she said, I don't look good in orange or stripes, so we better look for that money tree. When you got this, and you got a but, 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 you knew you were in trouble. Yeah. And if you got that with that woman, I wouldn't want to be on the other end. Um, the other reason I think Bev is retiring at this time of the year is the other thing that she loved so much, situational weather alerts. <laughs> no more. She's not gonna worry about how much snow is happening, when it's happening, and, and that's, that's gonna be Bob's deal. The one other date, so we, we know that Bev you know, took the, the role 12 years ago, but there's another date that I'm, I'm gonna ask some people in the room, do you have any idea what you were doing on April 25th, 1977? One, one person here knows what that date is, that's absolutely right. 
14,799 days ago, Bev joined BVNA. And every one of them has been a great day for BVNA. That's, I knew you were good at math. Yep, 40 years. So Bev, I want to thank you for what you've done, for the patience, for the agency, and for each of us that have worked with you. And I want to extend my personal thanks for the opportunity to let me be part of the team. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. So Bev served a number of years side by side with our former, most recent and former uh, chairman of the board, Phil Torallo. He unfortunately cannot be here with us this evening, but he did ask Andrew Eves to say a few words or read his speech. I'm going to read what, what Phil emailed me. If you like it, I helped him write it. If not, it's his. <laughs> OK. So good evening. First, allow me to express my deep disappointment at not being with you this evening to wish Beverly well in her retirement. I have the utmost respect and admiration for Beverly on both professional and personal levels, and truly regret missing the opportunity to participate in her official send off. After these brief comments, Andrew is going to read an introduction that I wrote on the occasion of Beverly's selection into the Signature Healthcare Ring of Champions last December. The introduction, which was written with Beverly's creative input, because I don't think she trusted me to do it effectively without her help, <laughs> really defines who Beverly is at her core. I think I speak for everyone assembled this evening when I offer heartfelt congratulations to Beverly on both a distinguished career and on her retirement. Beverly, the pleasure has been all ours. In closing, Bev, I couldn't find a Swedish blessing, so you're going to have to settle for an Irish one. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Let's all raise a toast to Beverly with best wishes for a long, healthy, and happy retirement. Go ahead. That's not it. That's not it. So, <laughs> so, okay, so now I'm going to read to you what Phil wrote for the, the, um, the Ring of Champions introduction. So, sorry, oh, this, was a, this was a little longer than. Okay, I'm not up. Uh, sorry. <laughs> All right, you ready? Good evening. My name is Phil Tarallo, and I'm the chairman of the Brockton VNA. This is a literal, literal interpretation. It's a pleasure for me to be here tonight and a privilege to be introducing the newest member of the Ring of Champions, my friend Beverly Pavaceras. In my professional life, I'm the Vice President of Administration and Finance for Line Laboratories, which is a small pharmaceutical manufacturing company here in Brockton and I live in the nearby town of Easton. As a resident of and businessman in the Brockton VNA service area, which by the way covers over 30 communities, I have come to realize the tremendous value in having a nonprofit, mission-driven home health care organization in my backyard. In any organization, a mission can be a statement that is written on a wall or found in an annual report or it can be a living and breathing embodiment of how that organization, one, conducts its business, two, makes decisions, and three, determines how best to use its resources. What I can tell you is that the Brockton VNA's mission is not simply a statement, but something that has been instilled into the organization by its leader, Beverly Pavaceras. If I were here to tell the audience that the healthcare field is challenging, for many of the medical professionals in the room, this is certainly not a news flash. Delivering quality health care in an environment where we see shrinking reimbursements and expanding regulations requires a tireless commitment of hard work, dedication, and competent leadership, all of which are personal characteristics of our guest of honor. In all of the time that I've known Beverly, which is close to 20 years, I can assure you that personal recognition, like tonight's honor, was the furthest thing from her mind. Beverly's nature is to serve others, which is, I am sure, why she became a nurse. 
She spent the past 35 years carrying on the century-old mission of the Brockton VNA in the community, and it has not been motivated by a desire to receive individual accolades for her significant efforts. Bev has steered the BVNA through dynamic changes that have taken place in healthcare in recent times, and she has done so always with the well-being of the organization and its ability to fulfill its mission as primary objectives. As the board chair, I know that our stewardship of the agency is strategic, sound, and of the highest ethical caliber. As I mentioned, I've known Beverly for almost two decades, from prior to the time that she became the president of the Brockton VNA. She was the agency's clinical director and right-hand person to Mary Lou McNiff, who was Beverly's predecessor as president. When Mary Lou announced her retirement, I was asked to join the search committee to find a successor, and Bev was one of several highly qualified nurse administrators who interviewed for the position. Well, I'm sure it's no surprise that Beverly was the most outstanding of several outstanding candidates, making an otherwise difficult task very easy for the search committee. In the time since, Bev has, without question, validated our decision and in the process made us look like geniuses. You know, I've never shared what I just told you with Beverly, and it's probably because I feared that she would have held us up for more money if she had known. <laughs> in all seriousness, Beverly enjoys the loyalty, respect, and affection of her senior management team because she is a leader in the truest sense of the word. She enjoys the respect of her nurses, therapists, aides, and administrative staff who are in the trenches working hard every day to represent the Brockton VNA with integrity and pride. And they're willing to do so because they know that Beverly is right there with them doing the same. In closing, it's a distinct honor for me to introduce a very worthy recipient and the newest inductee into the Ring of Champions, Beverly Pevaceris. Thank you, Andrew. And now for a special presentation, I'd like to ask Bev's son, Christopher, to come up. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I guess I'm supposed to represent the uh, out of the out of work life. Um, so my wife, <laughs> Meg, is here, and our son, Clark. Um, Bev's husband, my dad, Walter. Um, so I have a, a, just a presentation of a certificate from Congressman um, Lynch's office, uh, and then also a letter from Jim McGovern's office. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read them, but I'm gonna put them on the altar <laughs> to, <laughs> as an offering here. <laughs> um, uh, I just wanted to say one quick story, and that was, um, like was mentioned before, I was a, a staffer in D.C., and I worked on uh, energy and environment issues, and. Uh, when Obamacare was, uh, was making its way through, we had a bunch of all-nighters, and I remember we had a staff meeting, and my nickname in the office was Pavs, because Pavisaris is a pretty long name, and the, uh, Senator Rockefeller was, we were debating some amendments, um, and the legislative director said, um, you know, what do you think we should do? And I said, you know, I think we should, we should do this on this one. Everybody looked at me and said, you don't, you don't work on health care, Pavs. Like, what do you, why, why are you speaking up? And I said, because well, my mom said we should, <laughs> we should. <laughs> We should, uh, we should we should do this, <laughs> or this is the right way to go. So, um, just on healthcare, I tried to carry uh, some messages from my mom to D.C. So, I think I see the um, the recognitions maybe as a uh, as a gateway to future um, work. I think that she does have a passion for um, politics and uh, contributing to to keeping the mission going forward. So, uh, congratulations, Mom. <laughs> Thank you, Christopher. And for another special presentation, I'd like to ask our current chairman of the board, Margie Moan, to come up. Thank you, Bob. Um, on behalf of the Brockton um, Visiting Nurse Association board and staff, we have a parting gift for you, Beverly, um, to express our thanks for your long, hard years and leadership and guidance to us and the board and the staff. You're an inspiration to us all, and we're going to miss your presence at the board table for all the meetings in the next few years. 
We wish you good health and happy times on your new path. So can you come up, can you come up and receive your present? Don't go anywhere, we have one more thing for you. <laughs> Why don't we, we'll put that down though. And again, for our last special presentation, Walter Pavaceras. And just to wrap up, we're going to have a final toast to Bev. Now, to quote our chairman of the Finance Committee, the mark of a great individual is you leaving the organization stronger than when you found it. And Beverly definitely did that. So thank you very much. I just want to say thank you to everyone who is here. This has been a marvelous evening. And for once in my life, I actually do not have a written speech. <laughs> so um, it's, it's just wonderful seeing everybody. And I truly love the VNA. I think it's the greatest organization. And I am so excited that the search committee and that the board of directors approved outstandingly for Bob Ford to be my successor. I leave feeling very comfortable that he can continue the mission of the VNA and to really get us to the point of providing superior care, following through with that triple aim philosophy which I still believe in. And I, I just am thrilled to turn over the presidency to Bob Ford. So Bob. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Beverly. It is a true honor to be taking over from Beverly. Uh, you all know what an amazing woman she is, what an amazing leader. And so, it, like I said, if I can only fill a quarter of her shoes, I will consider this to be very successful. Thank you for all coming. Please stick around. There's some more food. Enjoy yourself. Thank you.